time and turned it around within a couple of wins of equaling the last two winning percentages here in his first year as head coach. Lynn Shorten, AC, is our referee. James Armstrong and Mike Fox are the umpires. We're about set to go. Outlaw to jump against Austin. And we'll get this one underway as Houston tries to make it seven in a row over Texas Tech. The Red Raiders control. Houston comes in seven and three in the conference. The Red Raiders are five and six. That's seven and three record for the Cougars. Good to be just a half game out of second place. Texas leads the conference nine and two, and then you have TCU at eight and three, and Houston a half game off the pace. Cougars counting on this zone the defense to get them off to a quick start. In the first game, they were able to do that. Tech never got back into the game. From the corner, the miss by Lamont Dale, and Houston gets the ball. And here come the Cougars as Derek Daniels will bring it to the front court. Daniels has been hot lately. His jumper missed, and Dale the rebound for the Red Raiders. Houston trying to trap him, but he gets away and brings it over the line. Austin has been in a scoring slump. There's Flemons. And a foul on the inside. Flemons, a very good free throw shooter. And he is not afraid to put it up in traffic. Well, he really isn't. Let's see if we can determine how he earned this free throws. He went inside. Remember, from in at 6 7, has started and played the post here for the Raiders and done a super job. That time he had the good offensive uh, positioning, went down inside. Nice couple of head fakes and got back up. So he has opportunity to score the first points of the game. That foul was on Charles Outlaw. Lemons, a candidate for player of the year. He, earlier this season, hit 30 free throws in a row to tie Bubba Jennings' school record. So he is a good free throw shooter, as we said, for a big man. James Dickey sees his team get on top. A rare miss for Flemings. Houston. One, one two in a row coming in, a win over Baylor and a win over Rice. Tech has won their last two Southwest Conference games, and in a bit of an irony, their wins have been over Baylor and Rice, their last two Southwest Conference wins. Ryan Moore back in the starting lineup for Tech, and he gives his team a lead as he took it strongly to the hole. Uh, they took it from a turnover, Jerry, and took it down to the other end. That's a transition basket, so Houston is yet to score. Up church. And the ball knocked away still belongs to the Red Raiders. 3-0 Tech. With the lead, Pat Foster up off that Houston bench. Ryan Moore had been starting, then spent some time on the bench. Now back in a starting role. He had quite a game against Rice, including 31 minutes of play without turning the ball over in their last game. Houston remains in this zone defense. Trying to cause the turnovers against Texas Tech so far. Big 44 Will Fremen got down inside. Alan Austin, number 12, had it get to Brian Moore. His pass to Lance Hughes, the co player of the week in the Southwest Conference, along with Dexter Cambridge for Texas. A pass in for Flemons, who gets the shot up and follows it. And Flemons has three, and Tech has a 5 nothing lead. That's determination right there. Uh, it really is. He got a shot block, followed it, and went back up. But he's tough inside, follows the bouncing ball all the way. He is tough inside, but he doesn't get into foul trouble very often. A miss by Upchurch, and Flemons with a rebound. Flemons may have lost the contact. And uh, he goes over to the bench and hands one of the uh, trainers his contact. So Will Flemons is playing a little... Out of sorts here, but he's hanging in there. Right. Anybody to get the rebound and pick up his contact is a guy that you have to watch inside, Jerry. He's pretty tough. We'll see if his shooting percentage goes down here. He'll just close one eye and continue to battle inside. Houston staying in that zone. They're one of the better defensive teams. A pass, nice pass on the inside. Flemons has it knocked away by Outlaw, but there's Hughes having another shot rejected. And Derek Smith has it for Houston. The Cougars come back, and all alone is Outlaw at the other end for the jam. Charles Outlaw is the bring it back on the break, and it's 5-2 in favor of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And it took Houston better than three minutes to score a point. Well, it really did. It took them three trips up the court to get the turnover that they wanted. This is Charles Outlaw that leads the conference in block shots. And uh, he showed you one of the reasons why is he got up high on that slam. Crowd thought there should have been a foul off front against Houston. There's a foul on the inside. Upchurch not too happy. Neither is Foster. And uh, Craig Upchurch called for his first foul. 
That's one of the fears that the Cougars have getting Upchurch and our outlaw in foul trouble is up. Upchurch picks up his first foul. Non shooting foul as uh, Will Freeman evidently still had the ball down on the floor. Still playing with only one contact in. I knew this was a non contact sport. Austin in traffic. Lamont Dea. And Smith with the rebound. Here comes Houston the other way. Down 5 2 in this one. Daniels had that ball kicked out of bounds. It belongs to the Cougars. They'll get a fresh 45 as James Dickey likes the defensive effort by his club. They got back in a hurry. Tech in their win Saturday over Rice did a lot of things right. Including shooting the lights out 61% from the field. And you can see their defensive intensity has picked up as well. It really has uh, different from the Cougars. They're in a man to man uh, defense here, trying to negate the inside game of the Cougars. Outlaw doesn't get it to fall, and Hughes with a rebound. Quickly down the other end, Lamont Dale for the layup. Dale, his first hoop, and Tech leads 7 to 2. Nice pass at the other end to Lamont Dale, who scored on the layup. While both teams wanting to run, right now the Raiders finding more opportunities to get up the court, hitting that open man in the lead. Eric Daniels against Brian Moore. Daniels, Outlaw was surprised by that pass. Houston's a little out of sorts right now, and they almost turn it over. It's safe. Dickey thought they were over the line. The crowd agrees with Dickey. There's a foul against Allen Austin. Dickey thought that ball crossed the line and should have been a turnover against Houston. Right, the Cougars got a big break there as they were able to save the ball in the backcourt. That's Coach Dickey uh, waiting for a second call there, but once the official makes the call, they usually stay with it. We're going to get a timeout here. It's a Texas Tech lead of five. You're watching the Southwest Conference Game of the Week on Prime Network. It was so hot, even planes couldn't fly. But out at the proving grounds, Oldsmobile was making it even hotter for this engine. Putting it through every city driver's worst nightmare. Testing like this has made the 3800 in this Olds 98 one of the most trouble-free V6s sold in America. With 99 models redesigned and engineered, GM is putting quality on the road. It takes all the right tools, drive, and determination to build a rock-hard, chiseled body. General Nutrition has the nutritional tools to help create the ultimate body with Phase 1, the complete bodybuilding system designed specifically for the beginner and intermediate athlete. If you're serious about bodybuilding, start with Cybergenics Phase 1. Help sculpt your ultimate body with General Nutrition Centers, the authority in sports nutrition products. with the early lead here in Lubbock we invite you to stop by your nearby Kroger store Dr. Pepper display to win tickets to the Southwest Conference Championship game March 15th and then become eligible for the grand prize one year free travel on Southwest Airlines and two tickets to Southwest Conference football and basketball games for one year first prize is a one year supply of Dr. Pepper and second prize a gift certificate from Kroger register today at Kroger for the Southwest special the Houston Cougars are not shooting that well. Tech doing a little better, and now the uh, Houston Cougars right out of their huddle turn the ball over. They are averaging 15 turnovers per game. The Red Raiders are averaging forcing 17 turnovers per game. Tech with the lead in the basketball. Flemons probably got that contact back in during that timeout. Also at the timeout, Sam Mack came off the bench, the leading scorer for the Cougars. He's now in for Jesse Drain, trying to get more scoring in that lineup. Mack, the leading scorer for Houston, is Mark Mack, before Mack or more mentioned. 
but he's doing even a better job off the bench. We'll tell you about him in a moment as Hughes has it for the Red Raiders, who leads 7 to 2. Lamont Dale for three doesn't get it, and the ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Allen Austin. Sam Mack comes into tonight's game, averaging just under 17 points per game. This is the third straight game he's come off the bench. In the first two games, he's averaging 23 per outing. Eric Daniels finds Sam Mack. He leads the conference in three-point shooting. Houston has been ice cold from the field tonight. Outlaw leads the conference in shooting percentage. Against Clemens, Banks went in. Charles Outlaw has all four points for Houston. He played his junior college ball, as did teammate David Diaz, not too far from here, just 40 miles up the road. The Tech lead is three, and they have the ball. Well, they look for Flemings all the time, don't they? For good reason. Yeah, he really does. He works hard to try to get open down low. Outlaw having a shadow and trying to keep him away from the ball. Lance Hughes for three. Lance Hughes has scored a career high in a Tech record 31 against Rice, a record for freshmen. Hits a tray to put Tech up 10-4. Sam Mack from the baseline doesn't get it. Lamont Dale went jumping over his bench as he was after the ball moments ago, but he's all right back on the floor. This is Lamont Dale. Puts it up, doesn't get it, but draws the foul. Lamont Dale, number 23, hustles all over the place, and James Dickey loves that effort. Well, that's been one of the most effective things that Tech has done so far, Jerry, getting the ball up the court quickly before the Cougars are able to get back in a defensive position. And here comes the Gaucho, who's the substitute unit off the Houston Cougar bench. That foul was on Derek Smith. The Gauchos are made up of Sam Mack, Tyrone Evans, David Diaz, Roger Fernandez, and Rafael Carrasco. Lamont Dale is at the line. One of the best, if not the best, defensive player for Texas Tech. The story at the free throw line you see there at 64%, averaging a little better than 10 per game. He has two points tonight. He'll shoot a pair here. Lamont Dale hails from Snow Hill, Maryland. Tech's lead is seven at the moment. And the Gaucho will try to do something about that for the Houston Cougars. Dale now with four points, and it's an eight-point Texas Tech lead. Tyrone Evans, number 12. Roger Fernandez to David Diaz. He's the other player who plays junior college ball nearby. Now, this unit is designed to put a lot of pressure on the defensive, and the main shooting threat would be Sam Mack in this group. They might have gotten Allen Austin for another foul against Tech. Austin, that's number two on Austin. Team foul number two on Tech. Here comes Brad, or excuse me, Demon Ashley in for Texas Tech as Austin comes out with that second foul. Austin did not score. And Ashley in there, junior college transfer out of Denver. Houston showing more motion on offense here. Well, they really are, but again, the only score and threat from the outside of this group is Sam Mack. Everybody else is trying to get the basketball to him, and they throw it away. And that's the problem when you come in with this many guys who are not offensive threats, Joe. You have to get an excellent execution in order to score. Foster may look cool on the outside, but he's burning on the inside. Well, it's a gamble to come in with five players off the bench. You change the momentum, you change everything, and it takes you a while to get that together unless they come in and do something defensively right away. Well, you mentioned it earlier about Mack and his shooting from the outside. Diaz also a threat to score, but the other three are known for their defensive efforts. Hughes on the baseline travel. So Tech turns it over. They turn it over 15 times per game. Houston averages forcing 17 turnovers per contest. Well, he is the freshman who had the turnover that time. Jerry, as you mentioned, is the Cole Southwest Player of the Week here. Quite an honor for a freshman. Along with Dexter Cambridge of Texas, Cambridge Player of the Week for the second consecutive week. This is David Diaz. He puts it up, doesn't get it to go, gets his own rebound, puts up another, and misses that one. Tipped by Fernandez. Doesn't fall, and Hughes tracks it down. Pretty good rebounder for a 6'4 player, this Lance Hughes. Damon Ashley from the outside doesn't get it. And the ball knocked around, picked up by the Cougars. Here they come. Evans the other way. Evans may take it all the way. He's cut off by Moore on a nice defensive effort. And Houston gets it to Sam Mack. He has not tried a three-pointer tonight. I mentioned he's leading the conference, hitting 41% from three-point range. Fernandez looking for Mack. 
crowd thought Fernandez walked. The officials didn't. Diaz for Fernandez. He forces a shot that doesn't fall, and there's Hughes with another rebound. Lamont Dale for Tech in the front court. So far, Tech more with, with a nice move there. Yeah. So far, Tech with a better defensive effort. Houston has not had a good shot opportunity to two consecutive times up the court. Lemons had it knocked away by Evans, and back come the Cougars. Sam Mack, it won't be long before he'll shoot one. It wasn't very long at all. Count the basket. As Sam Mack gets his first bucket of the night, the senior out of Chicago, Illinois, he will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. The foul is on Will Flemons, his first. Now Sam Mack, we see weaving his way through the defense there, got the got contact as he was going up. And remember, he's the leading scorer off the bench. You see one of the reasons why. Started out in the starting lineup early in the year. Came coming off the bench much more effective for the Cougars averaging 23 in the last three games. So the basket counts. He gets one more three-point play opportunity. Sam Mack, a 77% free throw shooter. Started his college career at Iowa State, then played junior college ball. Now with Houston. Mack converts the three-point opportunity, and Houston is down five. You're watching the Southwest Conference Game of the Week here on Prime Network. At GMC Truck, our only business is trucks and has been for over 80 years. A dedication to truck strengths and values to keep in mind. Because when you need to haul something, tow something, carry precious cargo, find new trails, or simply ride high and proud. There's nothing quite as strong as a truck. GMC Truck, the strength of experience. In tennis, you don't just play the opponent. You've got to play the ball. It's how you play the ball that determines whether your shot is in or out, whether the point is won or lost. Now, you can play the ball and win with this half-hour video by Tennis Magazine Instruction Editor Vic Braden. Free with a one-year subscription. Twelve issues of Tennis Magazine. Call 800-572-2600 for a full year of Tennis Magazine plus the free video. Just $13.77. Call 800-572-2600 now. Tomorrow's legends are today's champions on the ATP Tour. Tennis history is made here. Connors, Gilbert, Sanchez, and Agassi headline a world-class field taking the court in Scottsdale. It's the Purex Tennis Championships. Live coverage begins Friday night at 9.30 Eastern on Prime Network. The Red Raiders off to a good start here. They have won 13 games coming in. 13 and 10, their overall record under James Dickey in his first year. Those 13 wins equal the total of wins in their last two seasons. I mentioned this was a rebuilding year. Mack and Dickey has done quite a job to the point where he's the leading contender for Southwest Conference Coach of the Year. Well, so far, he deserves the lead, to be the leading contender. He's done a super job in trying to turn him around, coming off a big win against Rice. Jack turns it over. Upchurch got it into Outlaw. He missed the shot, but drew the foul. And the Cougars will go to the line. The long road back for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. They've got a chance for a winning season for the first time in quite a while here. They keep adding to that victory total. Boy, they've had some thin years, haven't they? We'll look at Charles Outlaw at the free throw line. He's not a very good free throw shooter. He has four points. Four of the seven for Houston. And that road back that you talked about, it helps to have a Mercedes Benz and Will, <laughs> Will Fleming to help you down that road a little bit because he is certainly the glue and is a junior and got one more year. 12 8, a four point tech lead. As you can see, the Cougars came out of the zone, de uh, the zone defense and went to a three quarter court trap, causing tech to get it up a little. Slower, but so far the Cougar defense has not done the job they've wanted. A couple of the new players out there for Tech number 22 is Stacy Bailey, number 33 is Brad Dale. Dale to Bailey, who almost lost it out of bounds. Brian Moore out front. Moore, Houston playing that tough defense. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Brad Dale 
They look inside for Flemons. Down to five seconds on the shot clock. Moore will try to create an opportunity. Forces a shot, hits the rim, and doesn't get it to go. And now a foul on Brad Dale. That's the first for the sophomore out of Amarillo. Brad Dale, number 33. He'll be uh, honored here at halftime. He's quite a student. He uh, will be honored for his academic achievements. He's got a 3.5 grade average. That's team foul number five on Texas Tech. Well, I'm sure he'd also like to have a 3.5 hang time to go up and get a little better rebound as he got the foul there against Charles Outlaw, who leads the conference in block shots, the number two rebounder. Diaz from the outside hits a three-pointer. David Diaz, the native of Venezuela, hits a tray. And it's a one-point Texas Tech lead now. Houston Press bothering the Red Raiders somewhat. Now Houston's got a little different lineup and now uh, they're doing a better job defensively. There's Will Flemons following the miss by Stacy Bailey. Will Flemons now has five points and it's a three-point tech lead. Or that Flemons is a rebounder. He led the conference in rebounding as a freshman. Ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Tech. It belongs to Houston. And James Dickey, very helpful in handing the ball to our referee, Lynn Shortnacy. Uh, you mentioned Fleming in his rebounding. He uh, is the best offensive rebounder in the game. As you saw him go back up, he's done. He's the leading offensive rebounder so far tonight, but very tough inside and out. Sam Mack trying to create something, and out front, Ashley with the foul. Damon Ashley. That'll be his first. Sam Mack, as you mentioned, the leading scorer for the Cougars. This lineup, Jerry, presents a little better offensive threat for the Cougars with Diaz, Daniels, and Mack in uh, uh, at the same time. And Craig Upchurch has yet to score. Remember, he's the guy we featured. He's the guy that has to score for the Cougars. This is the lineup they started the season with, the starting lineup for Houston. Eric Daniels is making his 117th consecutive start, a Houston team record here tonight. Upchurch on the inside, the native of St. Louis. Misses that one. Flemons had it, and he's fouled by Upchurch. I remember Craig Upchurch is a guy that has to stay on the court for the Cougars to win. I think that's foul number two on him, and that's one of the areas they're very concerned about. They cannot afford to lose him to fouls. How often do you see a guy miss a shot and then right away commit a foul? It's almost automatic that a guy is going to take a foul at times after missing a shot on the inside. Well, it really is, but this guy cannot afford to do it. Cougars, again, in that zone defense, hoping that it can shut down the inside game. Uh, Tech Tech so far has not been able to, but the whole inside game is Will Fremont. The Flemings outlaw battle tonight will be something to behold. Perhaps the best defensive center in the conference against perhaps the best offensive center in the conference. Ashley, Damon Ashley for three. The Colorado High School Player of the Year a few years back. Hits a tray to give Tech a six-point lead at 17 to 11. Sam Mack wants to go to work in traffic, misses. The ball knocked out of bounds, belongs to the Red Raiders. Pat Foster. His team down by six. We've got 7.59 to play, and the Red Raiders are taking it to the Houston Cougars. Prime Network and your regional sports network. Together, we bring you the best in sports. The 1964.5 Mustang, a classic car that took the country by storm. Now you can own a stunning replica of the design of this American favorite that is actually a working telephone. Introducing the 64 and a half classic convertible telephone, a meticulous recreation of this famous design that is both a valuable collectible and a one-piece telephone. This FCC-approved phone features a tone pulse option, last number redial, a non-slip tire base, it's hearing aid compatible, and when someone calls, the headlights flash and the horn honks. The classic convertible telephone is perfect for home or office and makes a great gift. The classic convertible telephone is available through this exclusive television offer for a limited time only for just $29.95. So to avoid disappointment, order your 1964 and a half classic convertible telephone now. To order your 64 and a half classic telephone, use your credit card and call toll-free 1-800-321-2020 or send check or money order for $29.95.
plus 485 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Choose from either red or black. Call 1-800-321-2020. Rush delivery available. Call now. This Cowboy's wondering why OSU's not number one. Coach thinks so, and so does the Cowboy called Houston. But there's some big old boys from Nebraska who don't think they're right. Oklahoma State in a house rocking Big 8 battle with Nebraska. Texas Tech has been led to this point by Will Flemons with five points. You wouldn't expect anything other than that. Flemons is their main man. He's coming off a 25-point uh, ball game against Rice when he hit 9 of 11 from the field. That's the way you used to do it, right? <laughs> In two games, yeah. <laughs> Lemon has been the whole show, though, inside for the Raiders so far. Houston pressing, but the Red Raiders get it over the line. And we have a traveling call against Damon Ashley, number 32. Dickey didn't think much of the call. Well, neither did the crowd here, but the official right there in the right position to make the call only takes about a half a step to get a walking violation. You can see what the Houston defense is doing here to the Red Raiders. They're very selective in their shots, aren't they? Yeah, but they're doing very well in their shot selection, especially when they go inside to Fleming. A couple outside shots have helped out also. A pass for Outlaw over his head. Another turnover against Houston. Now Foster sends uh, Derek Smith in along with Jesse Drain, Carrasco, Fernandez, and Tyrone Evans. Right now, Pat Foster is looking for some rhythm, looking for some chemistry with his ball club. He's trying to find something that works. So far, he has not been able to. This is the second time in with the Gauchos. With Derek Smith back with that group. He hasn't gotten uh, off the boat. He hasn't scored tonight. He's one of the top guys. Stacy Bailey for three. Senior out of Oakland, California. This is where the uh, Texas Tech Red Raiders led off against Rice. They shot the lights out from three-point range. 12 of 23 against Rice on Saturday, and they're bombing away here in Lubbock tonight against Houston. Carrasco. And remember, with this lineup, the main scoring threat, threat is Derek Smith from the outside, but Carrasco is able to get a nice little flip shot down in, inside. The native of Columbia gets his first bucket and cuts the Tech lead to seven. He was trying to press once again, but Tech gets it down the sideline. Damn, and Ashley had perhaps too much time to shoot. He was almost thinking about that one and misses. Evans the other way for Houston. Fernandez finds Drain, a highly thought of freshman out of Saginaw, Michigan. Fernandez is called for a walk. Pat Foster can't like that. Hughes back in for Texas Tech as Ashley comes out. And uh, Lamont Dale is in. And Will Flemons will get a rare rest. He doesn't sit very often on the bench for very long, does he? No, he doesn't, but he didn't hurt himself at all, and I didn't pick up any fouls. Got some scores down inside, very patient. Cougars back in this full court press, trying to get the turnover. Bounce pass for Lamont Dale. Hughes is there with the left hand. He goes, and a foul. How about that for a freshman making an adjustment in mid, uh, mid shot, if you will? Count the basket. The foul is on Fernandez. His first, and Lance Hughes now has five points, and he's a good free throw shooter. Well, Tech has done the super job of getting the ball up the court before the Houston Cougars are back on defense. Here they get a break as just being heads up and being in the right place at the right time. Got this basket, two points count, one additional, but gives them a three-point trip up the court. Great camera work by our Prime Network crew, and it's a 10-point Texas Tech lead, their biggest of the night. Houston with the basketball, down by 10. Ball handling getting a little sloppy here for this combination of Cougars in the lineup. They want to get the ball to Derek Smith because he's the guy with the outside threat with this combination. Carrasco hit on the inside earlier. Here's Fernandez now. That's Derek. the man they want to have the ball, but he gives it back. Fernandez for three. Roger Fernandez doesn't shoot outside very often, but he cans one there. Scouting report says that only Smith shoots from the outside. Fernandez. Here's a steal by Smith. Fort Drain forces the shot, but he was fouled while he was on the floor. It won't be a shooting foul. Good defensive effort by Derek Smith, who's not really known for his defense, is he? No, he isn't, but he did a good job that time with the full court press. That's the first time that it worked. Turnover for the Cougars. They got the shot that they wanted. 
didn't go in, so they have two free throws as Derek Smith is trying to hold a contact on his hand and uh, trying to stay in the lineup, but he's going to come out as the Cougars make more substitutions, Jerry. That's the uh, seventh team foul on Texas Tech. So Houston will be going to the line to shoot the one and one. Jesse Drain will be at the line. The foul was on Ryan Moore. Wait a minute. Now they've got some confusion on the line. Well, the officials, James Armstrong and Mike Fox, along with Lynn Short and AC, will get it straightened out. Drain, an excellent free throw shooter. Drain, his first point of the night. from Saginaw, Michigan, a 6'7 player. Hits them both. And now coming back in is Upchurch for the Cougars. Next Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern, more exciting Southwest Conference basketball as TCU faces these same Houston Cougars. Should be a great battle of big men inside between Reggie Smith of TCU and Houston's Charles Outlaw. TCU at Houston next Tuesday on most prime affiliates. Tech by five. They've led by as many as 10. Lance Hughes for three. He now has nine, has a pair of trays tonight. Here's Matt for three. Flemons back in there, gets the rebound. Tech will run. Chad Collins, number three in the ball game now. Lance Hughes is playing with a lot more confidence. Stacy Bailey for three. Bailey with a pair of trays, has six. Somebody knocked Charles Outlaw flying on the inside. Play's getting rough. That really is, but Tech is starting to exert themselves from the outside. They were looking for the outside shooting threat and have back-to-back -back threes. Now Tech. And a traveling call against Derek Smith. And right now, the Red Raiders are really taking it to the Houston Cougars. Well, they really are, and they're doing it on both ends. Their defense is applying the pressure, and their offense scoring from the outside. Another turnover is against the Cougars. Texas Tech is trying to take charge of the ballgame. Is there any doubt that James Dickey has these fans turned on to the Red Raiders basketball program in Lubbock? Well, remember, he's got them fired up. They're in fifth place right now in the conference. Like to move up in that top four to get a better position in the playoffs. They come in a record of five and six in the conference, but they're all over the Houston ball club right now. Uh, he was very pleased with their effort against Rice University where they scored 100 points. And he'd like to do that here at home. Dale was out of control that time down the floor, and Diaz brings it back for Houston. The lead is 11 for Tech, their biggest advantage of the night. Outlaw works against Flemons on the inside. This should be interesting. Outlaw with the bucket and the foul. Count the bucket. Outlaw with seven points. Foul is on Lamont Dale, number one on Dale. And Outlaw will go to the line looking for the three-point play. He's a native out of San Antonio, junior college transfer. Had a career-high 14 rebounds in the first meeting against Tech. Outlaw working hard down inside. Will Fleming had good defensive position, but Dale comes from the weak side at the last moment and fouls. So Outlaw works very hard, very fortunate to get the uh, foul. Right at the line. One for two. And this is another free throw. And Tech with the basketball, leading by nine. Little Chad Collins, number three for the Red Raiders, and a foul here on Sam Mack. Not a particularly good foul, was it? No, it really wasn't. And we're going to get a timeout here as the Texas Tech Red Raiders have a nine-point lead as you're watching the Southwest Conference Game of the Week here on Prime Network. On a hot West Texas desert, something was done that was never done before. The stock engine in the CR1 Corvette broke a 14-year-old Mercedes record, running 28 straight hours, averaging 173 miles per hour. The big surprise, however, is that the engine design for every ship is tested to even tougher durability standards. With 99 models redesigned and engineered, GM is putting quality on the road. 
It all starts with how you move your feet. The approach. The takeoff. Use your feet. Make tracks. Step into it. Put your best foot forward. It's all in the feet. I dig shoes like that. Footwork on Prime. It's no small feat. Tomorrow's legends are today's champions on the ATP Tour. Tennis history is made here. Connors, Gilbert, Sanchez, and Agassi headline a world-class field taking the court in Scottsdale. It's the Purex Tennis Championships. Live coverage begins Friday night at 9.30 Eastern on Prime Network. Part of the reason Texas Tech has that nine-point lead, they, they've been successful from three-point range again this evening. They've hit half of their tries from outside the three-point line. Houston has put up a lot fewer shots, but they are also hot from outside, if you will. Right now, Teckel holds the rebounding edge 15 to 11 over Houston, and the turnovers even at five apiece. Tech with the ball in a nine-point lead. Stacy Bailey, another three, doesn't get this one to fall, and there's Lamont Dale for the rebound in traffic, puts the shot up, he traveled. Tried to get that shot up over Outlaw, who can make you adjust your shot and think about it, he is the leading shot blocker in the conference. Good defensive effort by Outlaw, Foss forced Lamont Dale to take a travel. Tech has been able to stay completely away from the turnover so far, but that one caught them. It's a good offensive effort, and then walk with the ball. There's a travel on Upchurch, he took a little walk across the lane. The Houston Cougars seem to be about two steps off of what they want to do. They've had just numerous turnovers and walking violations down inside from guys that are normally make good moves to the basket. Houston in their first meeting, a 77-58 win over the Red Raiders as Ashley comes back in for Tech. Houston had it all their way, and they really pressured the Red Raiders into a number of mistakes. But tonight, Tech getting the job done. Bailey in the middle for the pull-up jumper. Doesn't get it to fall. Ball is loose, and Sam Mack comes away for Houston with the basketball. Sam Mack. Looks inside for Outlaw. Outlaw, they thought he traveled. The crowd did. A whistle, and he did travel. He may have not traveled the first time. He says he was pushed. For the second time, they got him for the walk. Well, the Houston inside defense came in as the featured defense tonight, but Texas Tech has been the team that's really shut down the offensive game inside for the Raiders. They try to trap Chad Collins. He, a nice bounce pass to Stacy Bailey. Bailey down low for Flemings. Will Flemings. He has seven. How about the pass by Stacy Bailey? Excellent ball boom, a good decision by the senior, Will Fleming, again, the man inside that they go to when in doubt. And really, Houston hasn't had a go-to guy tonight. Well, they haven't. They've searched for two or three times from outside or inside, and uh, nothing has worked for them. Last touch by the Red Raiders. It stays with Pat Foster's club. We'll watch the work of Stacy Bailey to Will Flemons at the other end. Well, it's just excellent ball movement. Excellent ball movement creates a basic shot, and that's what they got. Outlaw wants to put it up, uses his body, misses the shot, and Flemons gets a rebound for the Red Raiders. He's second in the conference in rebounding and a foul out front against Derek Daniels. Number one on Daniels. Clemens gets it done in traffic, and the, and the surprising thing, he doesn't commit many fouls. Well, he didn't. He held his ground very well, but he watched the basketball, so you have to find the ball, and that's what he was able to do. He timed his jump just right. No wasted effort. Rebounding is not always Jerry how high you jump, but how you time you jump inside and uh, be able to get the basketball. Chad Collins has not scored tonight. He's a freshman, as you see, out of San Antonio. Tech has done a nice job at the line tonight. Flemons thus far. Will Flemons has seven points and eight rebounds. Well, just when you say they're doing a nice job at the line, Collins misses the free throw, and back comes Houston. Down by a dozen. Tech with their biggest lead of the night. 
Outlaw against Fleming's on the inside. Outlaw doesn't get it to go. The tip by Upchurch doesn't fall, and Collins has the rebound for the Red Raiders. Here they come on the run. Collins is fouled out front. And for Charles Outlaw, that foul in that spot, not a good one for him. That's his second. The Cougars continue to be out of sync. Charles Outlaw, one of the top rebounders and defensive players in the league inside. That time was outside of his range. Collins did a super job. Jerry going through the pack, protecting the basketball, and the Cougars continue to hurt themselves with the turnovers and the unnecessary fouls. Collins shooting the front end of the one and one misses. So for a good free throw shooter, he's missed two of his last three. Daniels trying to make something happen. Outlaw won't shoot from there. Almost a steal by Tech. Outlaw will shoot from there and miss. Upchurch is there. Upchurch from close range. The hoop. And a foul on the Red Raiders. Upchurch, his first points of the night, and it comes with a minute 39 to play in the first half. So the Red Raiders have done a job on him. Now Upchurch is the guy that's going to have to go and get the ball. Outlaw still not very comfortable. Greg Upchurch works inside, positions himself very well, goes back up with a nice soft jumper. But most of the effort happened with that hustle inside to get the offensive board. Offensive rebound gives you a second shot, and he showed you how to work inside. They're calling the foul on Damone Ashley. And they say that's his third, and Alan Austin, who has two fouls, has replaced him. Upchurch at the line. Completes the three-point play, his first three points of the night. It's a nine-point Texas Tech lead at 32-23. And holding this club, Houston, to 23 points for the first 18 and a half minutes of the first half is quite a defensive job by the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Here's a foul on Derek Smith. And whereas Smith, his second, whereas Houston was only called for 10 personals in the first meeting with Texas Tech, Houston getting some players in some uh, dangerous waters foul-wise here in the first half in the second meeting. Well, so far, their full-court pressure especially causing the foul trouble. You see the second on Derrick. Jerry, what's happening to him in their full-court press is that they're trying to go for the steal as opposed to the turnover. And that's where they're picking up the foul. Derrick Smith that time reaching for the ball as opposed to trying to contain the offensive man. So bad positioning and bad gambles causing those foul problems that you were talking about. Hughes. It's both free throws now has 11 to lead all scorers. So he picks right up where he left off against Rice. Sam Mack. His team down by 11. Diaz works against Hughes. Outlaw takes the shot from the outside. That's not his range, and he knows it. Mack can shoot it from out there. Tech has done a great job defensively. Mack in traffic doesn't get it, but there's Outlaw for the jam. Giles Outlaw. Now with nine points, he's hitting 68% of his shots from the field, and most of them are from that range. <laughs> Anytime you go up above the hoop, you're going to shoot a high percentage, but here's Outlaw showing you why he's one of the top defensive players and rebounders. Oh, while well, we were away to that replay, Outlaw picks up his third foul as he was trying to shield Allen Austin. So a foul problem here for Charles Outlaw and Pat Foster. He picks up his third with a minute seven to play in the half. Charles Outlaw, the guy that Jerry's talking about. Here you see the action. He bumps into the offensive man so forcefully that he knocks him out of position, and that was before the ball was able to come in, and that's the wrong time to do it. Three personal fouls. He gets the seat. David Carrasco takes his place in the line. Brian Moore will be at the line. Moore against Rice in 31 minutes Saturday scored 12 points. He handed out six assists, picked up two steals. He was four for four from the field, two for two from three-point range, and two for two from the line, and no turnovers. That's a ball game. Huh? And they're starting to miss the free throws now. you got to get the small extras as they come your way. The free throws, the out-of-bounds, the turnovers, and cash in on them. He's got to make one out of two, and he does. More. With three points. Houston was down 16 in the second half against Texas A&M. Came back to win that ball game. So don't count Houston out, even though they're making silly mistakes like that. Well, not only that, but that's Derek Daniels. You're one of the top ball handlers in the conference. He won a couple of games without a turnover at all to make the cross court court pass attempt, and that's uh, not typical of Daniels' play. Now, if you're Texas Tech and you're thinking upset here, You've got to take advantage of those opportunities. 
Bailey misses the trade. Hughes crashes the board. Braddale with the rebound. Tech hustling will get another opportunity. 40 seconds left in the half. Allen Austin. Stacy Bailey. Houston staying in that zone defense. There's just a one second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. You're looking at the game clock. Tex wants to go for one shot here. Usually you work the clock down to below 10 seconds and then start some type of play or one on one move from the outside. But remember, the Cougars are in a zone defense, so you're going to have to really get an open shot to get a good one off here. Stacy Bailey. Hands now to Bryant Moore. Seven seconds left in the half. Oh, what a pass to Brad Dale. Ball knocked away, but a foul on Houston. So Brad Dale will go to the line. A foul on the Cougars. On David Diaz. Well, they couldn't get the shot here, but this pass is just as good as a shot. Wham, right down to the open man. The only thing that kept it from working is that Dale couldn't handle the ball down inside, but Brian Moore finds the open man. So they get the shot anyway as they go to the foul line for two or one and one opportunity. Brad Dale has not scored tonight. now. It's an 11 point tech lead. Five seconds left in the half, so Houston will get a chance to put one more shot up, you would think, before the half ends. Brad Dale with his first two points of the night. David Diaz for Houston. Misses the tip by Mack doesn't go, and the Red Raiders fans are ecstatic. A 12 point lead at halftime, and Mack, Texas Tech, has played an outstanding 20 minutes of basketball, particularly defensively. They really have, and defensively is where they started their opportunities. Got the transition basket from the steals and the defensive rebounds, Jerry, and they've done a super job. Texas Tech by 12 at halftime. Our score, the Red Raiders 37, Houston 25. You're watching the Southwest Conference Game of the Week on Prime Network. Hi, I'm Susie of Video Magazine. Would you like to get a free trial issue of video? There's a whole new world of exciting video products on the market. Camcorders, VCRs, and TVs. But which one is best for you? Month after month, Video Magazine lets you in on the hottest camcorders and coolest VCRs. The latest and the greatest. Where the buys are and which movies are worth watching. Secrets of professional shooting and how to get the most out of your dollars. Act now and get our annual camcorder issue, special awards issue, and full preview issue. All devoted to state-of-the-art new products. You can try Video Magazine risk-free by calling the number on your screen now. You'll receive the magazine on a free trial basis. If you decide to subscribe, it's just $9.97 for 11 more issues. That's 66% off the newsstand price. Call 1-800-831-3733 to get your free trial issue. That's 1-800-831-3733. How can you stop a throbbing toothache? Massage your hand with ice. How do you cure poison ivy? Try oatmeal. How do I know these cures really work? Because my staff and I interviewed over 500 top US doctors for this incredible book, The Doctor's Book of Home Remedies from the editors of Prevention Magazine Health Books. I'm Bill Gottlieb, Editor-in-Chief. And I can assure you there has never been a more complete encyclopedia of home healing techniques. Over 670 pages, 2,300 remedies. From controlling diabetes to ending diaper rash, it's all right in here. Call now for the Doctor's Book of Home Remedies. Try it absolutely free for 21 days. Then if you choose to keep it, pay in three easy installments of only $8.98. Plus you'll get this Meals That Heal cookbook free. Remember, you can try the Doctor's Book of Home Remedies free for 21 days. So call now. Call 1-800-245-7556. Oh, Allen Austin's still in. They take out Stacy Bailey. Mack with two free throws now has seven. So Bailey has been taken out. Austin still in there with three fouls. And now a foul on Diaz. And the Cougars have come out of the zone defense, gone to a man-to-man, -man, but again, that's because they have the quick team in. But David Diaz picks up the reaching foul here on Lance Hughes, trying to keep him from going baseline. Three on Diaz. 
Mondale out high for Brian Moore. Tech up by four. 50 to 46 our score. Lemons on the inside had it knocked away by Mack. It stays with the Red Raiders. They'll have 37 seconds on the shot clock. James Dickey calling the inbounds play. You got Fleming now being played by Sam Mack. Sam Mack at 6-6. Playing Clemens down inside and doing a good job so far. Knocked that last pass away. Lamont Dale from the free throw line with the jumper. Lamont Dale now with 11. Mack is not known for his defensive prowess, so he has a job to do. This Upchurch. Is, this is where the Cougars want to go to get it to Upchurch inside, but he is not able to get a shot off. Smith has been quiet, misses there. Another rebound for Fleming, so he protects the basketball. Brian Moore runs the offense for the Red Raiders, almost gets into trouble. Six-point Texas Tech lead. Raiders have gone to a type of motion offense here to get the ball in to Will Clement. Again, good defensive moves down inside. Derek Daniels come out of there with the ball. Made the steal. Now feeds Smith, who scores the layup. Derek Smith, believe it or not, his first points of the night, and Smith has been injured, came down hard on his left hand after making that layup. Derek Smith, the senior from Humble, Scored a season high 20 in their win over Rice that you saw here on Prime Network. Let's take another look. Well, he took a, takes a giant move from the outside. Here's a nice pass by Daniels. Smith goes up with no dribble, goes up over the defensive man, the body contact there. He comes down on the top. Looks like he came down on that left hand. And he goes to the side. He's holding, as you can see, the left hand. That's the shooting hand also. And ironically, that was his first basket of the night. Yeah, they're checking out his left wrist. He came down hard. He's replaced by Roger Fernandez. 52-48, Tech with the lead in the basketball. Houston trying to stay in the hunt in the Southwest Conference. If this was the NBA, that basket would have counted. But this isn't the NBA. No continuation. No foul con on no Mack. No continuation, but what an outstanding move by Will Fleming. As that time, he went out to the guard spot, put it on the court, and goes inside. Watch him go by Sam Mack here. He's the postman. Remember, playing inside, goes between two defenders and gets the foul inside. Didn't get the basket, but made the right move. Third foul on Mack. Houston has some players with some fouls. The jumper from the top, Brian Moore. That's a two-pointer. Had his foot on the line. Seven for Moore. A six-point tech lead. Houston has won six in a row from the Red Raiders. Tech snapped a five-game losing streak against Rice on Saturday. They're trying to snap a six-game losing streak against Houston tonight. Mack now with nine as he scored from close range. And Houston staying close enough where they put a real push on here. They can take the lead. Tech, on the other hand, has to fight off that challenge as a game of spurts is what basketball is all about. You get to win as many of those spurts as you can and keep the momentum there. Upchurch now working against Flemings. Offensive foul, Flemings. That's three on him. And Dickey doesn't like it at all. Five team fouls on the Red Raiders. And we're going to get a timeout. Look at James Dickey. He did not like this call at all. As Will Clemens picks up his third. Let's see if we can make the call here. The offensive man starts, the defensive man beats him to the spot. Again, that's the toughest call in basketball. And the coaches are unhappy. We'll tell you about it when we return to Lubbock. It's showtime. Showtime. Hey! Whoa! I'll drive your partner with this half-hour instructional video, free with a one-year subscription to Golf Digest, just 1977. Call 800-453-4300. Imagine the video and Golf Digest. Call 800-453-4300. Hold on, folks. The Bulls win it! Barclay for three! Oh, no! If you love basketball, this is the show for you. The plays of the week, player profiles, and magic moments from the past. It's all in NBA action. Every week on Prime Network, available on most Prime affiliates. A message from your Shriners Hospitals. 
This bathroom could be the most dangerous room in the house. A lot of kids are seriously burned by scalding hot water in bathtubs. Small kids should never, ever take a bath without a grown-up watching them closely. First of all, run cold water into the tub. Then add hot water to warm it up. Kids always want to play with the faucets, and hot water on their tender skins can scald. Hot water can burn in less than three seconds. Things have gotten tight here in Lubbock, Tech by Four. Ground transportation for the Prime Network production crew is provided in part by Dollar Rent-A-Car. Dollar Rent-A-Car is right on the airport, right on the money, with over 1,300 worldwide locations. Call your travel agent or 1-800-800-4000 for reservations. I mentioned both coaches were unhappy. James Dickey was irate that Wolf Lemons was just called for his third personal. He went out on the floor to say something to one of the officials. Pat Foster then came out screaming, thinking that Dickey should have been called for a technical. Tech by four. Upchurch misses the jumper. The rebound pulled down by Austin. Players falling all over the place. Lamont Dale goes to the hole and scores. 13 for Dale. He leads all scores as a Baker's dozen. Tech by six. Houston on a bit of a run here, having scored on nine of their last 12 possessions. They can get hot in a hurry. Upchurch in traffic doesn't get it to go. A foul on Tech. Upchurch, Upchurch, excuse me, has to have a big game down inside. He's working hard to get open. That so fast by Sam Mack as Upchurch came down the middle. And that goes to the line for two shots. Excuse me, Mac. That's number four on Clemens. So mark that down with 10.37 to play. Tech up by six. Clemens has called for his fourth personal. So Upchurch, who has nine points, will be at the line. We talked about these two guys at the start tonight, Upchurch and Clemens. The uh, scoring battle fairly even, but Clemens has dominated the boards tonight. Now he's on the bench. Upchurch splits a pair here, now has 10 points. He's a double figures, and Tech leads by five. Tech is Tech taking a gamble here, trying to uh, maintain the momentum without Will Clemens in the lineup, but it's a key time to try to get him some rest. Well, Lamont Dale has had the hot hand, number 23, he has a game high 13 points. Fleming out of the lineup. Texas Tech running a motion offense trying to get the inside basket and they do. But it's the freshman Lance Hughes who now has 13 points as he drove the baseline. That was a very confident play by the freshman. And a foul on the inside. They call that one on Austin. Austin and Mack having some words. That for Austin will be his fourth. Nice battle down inside. Everybody trying to get the position. It was Texas Tech running the motion offense. The freshman Lance Hughes just finds an open basket by Fernandez, an open lane with it by Fernandez and goes to the basket. On the opposite end, you see the battle inside Sam Mack and Austin as Austin loses that battle. Sam Mack will be at the line. Fourth personal foul by Austin, but. Will Freeman, remember on the bench, so Jerry, they got to have somebody maintain the inside momentum for him. Damon Ashley is now in for Allen Austin, who departs with those four fouls. Mack now with 10 points tonight, and he's perfect from the line, four for four. Pat Foster. His team has dug themselves a hole they're trying to dig out of here tonight. Well, this guy has the sharpest shovel because he's the best free throw shooter for the Cougars. Ah, but he's not able to get that pile of dirt, huh? And Tech clears it off. Here they come. Moore almost picked up his dribble and made a big mistake there, but able to control it. Hughes in the middle in traffic with the left hand. Lance Hughes, 15 points to lead all scores. Tech by eight. I tell you, there's some good-looking freshmen in this conference this year. And now a foul on DeMond. Ashley. That for Ashley is his fourth. Well, the Houston game plan now seems to be to work Mack and Upchurch down low. And 
until they find somebody from Texas Tech who can stop them. You see the Houston bench and the coaching staff going with that strategy. And Max been the most effective man down inside here in the second half. Houston as a team, a 66% free throw shooting team. Tech, a much better free throw shooting club, if you will. Mac, 11 points tonight. Show you how effective Mac is from that free throw line. In one game earlier this season, he was seven for seven from the charity stripe, and now is the time to for him to make the big free throws. And for Texas Tech, it's the wrong guy to have on the line. Tyrone Evans, number 12, in for Roger Fernandez. So they've got three guards out there: Evans, Daniels, and Diaz. Now if he makes the second free throw, very possibly a full court press coming up. Or number two, they go back to the half court trap trying to get the ball with the guards inside. We'll find out here. And no pressure really from Houston. I think Pat Foster also looking for some outside scoring threats and trying to take a load off Daniels. Yep. Let, let Evans run the show and get the ball to Daniels who can pop it from the outside. Yeah, especially because Tech is in this motion offense. He's trying to create some defense to keep up with quickness. Ashley. Out of Dale. Houston playing man to man right now. Texas Tech working the shot clock down to the best percentage they can get. That's on Evans. His second. And Thursday night, you know, is double header night on Prime Network at 8.30 Eastern. The posse rides into town. As surprising Tulane takes on Louisville. Then at 11.30, Oregon will face three time defending Pac 10 champion Arizona. A terrific double header Thursday on most Prime Network affiliates. missing the free throw and Tech gets it back so both teams are over the limit now for fouls here's a pass down for Brad Dale got away and the Red Raiders turn it over and uh, James Dickey wants his offense to show a little more movement a little more motion and they've gone a little flat here uh, the Cougars with this version of the Gauchos in the lineup have been able defensively get it work, but they pick up a big foul here with Sam Mack down inside Jerry with an offensive foul. His fourth, it comes with 844 to play. And since he had possession of the ball, they won't be shooting free throws, so Tech will have to travel the length of the floor, leading by six. Tech's done a good job from start to this point, handling the basketball very well. Very disciplined, looking for the highest percentage shot. And remember, Jerry Will Fleming still on the Tech bench, as this group has not uh, lost the momentum with him out of the lineup. Tech leading with the basketball, 60-54 high score. A pass on the inside and a foul on Tyrone Evans. Three on Evans. So Hughes will go to the line to shoot the front end of the one and one. Let's tell you a little bit about this motion offense. It's, this motion offense is doing two things, Jerry. It's working the clock to perfection for Texas Tech. And number two is causing some problems defensively for the Cougars as they've been able to create a foul opportunity the last three times down by using this motion offense. And they can only do it with Will Fleming out of the lineup. He is now with 60 points. Good news for Houston. You saw 54 come into the ball game. Derek Smith injured his left wrist earlier after making a basket, took a hard fall, but he's back in there. The youngster Hughes hits a pair of free throws, now leads everybody with 17 points, and Tech has an eight-point lead. We have a long way to go, and this is a dandy shaping up here in Lubbock. Upchurch backing in, Mack for three, his first of the night. Sam Mack now with 15 points. He leads the conference hitting 41% from the three-point strike. Moore in traffic is foul. Daniels, the guilty party. That for Daniels, his second. Uh, Brian Moore with a very smart move here as he didn't have anybody open, so he goes down to the side with the head fake and goes up. He gets the shot off. Well, uh, thank goodness we were taking a shot of James Dickey there because as Brian Moore went to the free throw line to tuck his shirt back in, he inadvertently pulled his shorts down. This is a family show. 
Brian Moore now with eight points. Here comes Houston down by six. 7.53 to play. Sam Mack from the outside again. Doesn't get this one to fall, and Lamont Dale clears it off for the Red Raiders. Ryan Moore, I think they've got the shot that they wanted. It just didn't fall for them. Sam Mack is the guy that's inside and outside. He has the hot hand for the Cougars. Ryan Moore tries a three and buries it. Moore with 11, his first tray of the night. And Tech has a nine-point lead. They are hanging tight. Daniels a long three. Ashley the rebound is foul. Derek Smith the personal for Smith his third. Red Raiders of Texas Tech getting the breaks here as you see a little instruction by Coach James Dickey who has turned this program around after two losing seasons back to back here one win tonight could equal the best winning percentage in two years here at Texas Tech and he said he wanted to regain Jerry the winning attitude here at the university. Ashley three points tonight. Hitting 40 percent of his free throws this year. He has struggled from the line again tonight 0 for 2 and James Dickey when you miss free throws that puts gray hair coaches heads well, especially when you're trying to protect the lead here against one of the top teams in the conference. Four now for Ashley, we get a timeout. 7.15 to play, Tech by eight. You're watching the Southwest Conference Game of the Week on Prime Network. Prime Network and your regional sports network. Together, we bring you the best in sports. If you've ever struggled with a handheld trimmer, you'll love this revolutionary new kind of trimmer on wheels. Just look how easy it rolls on those two big wheels and glides in any direction on this front-mounted mobile. It's perfect for trimming around rocks, along fences, buildings, sidewalks, and in all those hard-to-reach corners. The new DR is also a mower. It cuts tall grass waist-high weeds, even wet grass and rough areas with never-before ease. There's no steel blade to bend or dull. You'll just love what the DR Trimmer Mower can do for you and your property. A big color catalog is just $2. Call toll-free 1-800-342-2800. That's 1-800-342-2800 for your big color catalog all about the revolutionary DR Trimmer on Wheels. Arizona's Cats and Jammer Kids are ripping down rims like there's no tomorrow. While Oregon's only hope is a mass migration to the hoop. The Wildcatters prowling for foul. Duck, Arizona and Oregon. Tech staying in control here in Lubbock. And this telecast is authorized under rights granted to Prime Network by the Southwest Conference and is not intended for the commercial use of our viewing audience. Any reproduction, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of Prime Network and the Southwest Conference is prohibited. We've got some foul problems shaping up here. Houston has Mac Outlaw, Upchurch, Smith, and Diaz in an area of concern. Tech with. Clemens, the key man there in foul trouble. A ten point Texas Tech lead, just over seven minutes to play. Texas Tech, Jerry now has switched to a zone defense to try to protect this lead and get the basketball. Here's Diaz trying a three. Upchurch with the offensive rebound, saves it, and Derek Smith corrals it. Good hustle by Craig Upchurch. Sam Mack in traffic. Mack now with 17 points to pace Houston. And they're going to press, aren't they? Have to do it. They have to have the basketball the full court presses. Well, we should create the ball for them, but Texas Tech has been beating that press all night. Ashley tries a three. Mack with the rebound. An eight-point Tech lead. 
Houston with the basketball. They don't have to hurry. There's still lots of time left. Daniels finds Derek Smith who tries a three. And Hughes gets a rebound for the Red Raiders. Had a man actually open down the length of the floor but didn't see him. Now Lamont Dale over Diaz and Diaz takes another charge as Dale is called on the offensive foul. Third foul of the night for Lamont Dale. David Diaz, second time tonight he's been in position to take a charge. Big call here by the official is Dale really made a power move to the basket, tried to avoid the defensive man, but he gets the offensive foul. Basket didn't count either as it rolled off the backside, so we walked the length of the court for the Cougars to shoot the one and one. By the way, while Will Clemens was on the bench, and we see him back into the contest, Tech outscored Houston by the slightest of margins, but they outscored us 9 to 8. Diaz, a good free throw shooter, has six points tonight. This is the free throw. Won't get the second. Well, the top rebounders back into the game now. Fleming and Outlaw for Houston, both with four fouls, both walking on eggshells, but both have to have a good performance here down the stretch for their respective teams. An eight-point Texas Tech lead. Hughes has played a strong game tonight. Has it slapped away? It still belongs to the Red Raiders. They'll have 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Like you don't think James Dickey is intense? You don't think he wants this one here tonight? He's done a job here in just his first year. This is his first head coaching position. He was an assistant at Arkansas. He was an assistant at Kentucky. By the way, Will Clemens, another double-double tonight, 11 points and 10 rebounds. That makes 15 double-doubles for him this season. Ashley hits the open jumper. Come on, Ashley now with six points. A 10-point Tech lead. Now you mentioned Tech's performance while he was out of the lineup. That's the kind of support help that he's gotten. The outside shots. Outlaw with 13, and he had that NBA move you talk about with the left elbow. He got away with it there. Not only that, that was four fouls against four fouls as Will Fleming was determined not to foul him. There's a pass for Flemings. Knocked away off the hands of Flemings. The Cougars come back down by eight with the basketball. Derek Smith, nice spin move in the middle, and he hits the jumper. Derek Smith only with four points, but that's a big hoop right there. His team down six now, and they're going to press. Dale for the Red Raiders finds Ashley to Hughes. Will he drive all the way and put it up? He does. Offensive foul. Will they count the basket? No. Lance Hughes for the offensive foul. His second. And James Dickey is irate. He's after Lynn Short in AC. Lynn Hughes, the freshman, coming off a 31-point game against Rice, makes a nice fake. The defensive man was set. Excellent call by the official. Not a popular call here, but a good call by the official. A six-point Texas Tech lead. Houston with the basketball. 69-63, 4.20 to play. Mack cut off. Good defense by Ashley. A pass for Derek Smith, taken away by Lamont Dale, and he stepped out of bounds. It'll go back to the Cougars. It'll go back to Houston. Lamont Dale with a heady defensive play, but couldn't stay under control and went out of bounds as Upchurch will check back in. Excellent effort by Texas Tech. They shut the momentum down for, for a minute. Cougars will get the ball back to get a new shot clock, too. Upchurch in for Derek Smith. Eric Daniels, the quarterback of the Houston offense. They haven't had a real consistent performer offensively, although Mack has picked it up in the second half tonight. He had a cold first half. He's got an open court if he wants to go inside. Outlaw finds Diaz for three from the corner. That one doesn't go, and the rebound actually clears it off. Texas Tech ahead to Hughes for the jam. Lance Hughes now with 19. That kid in high school entered four dunk contests and won three of them. And a foul here on Lamondale. His fourth. We may have our play of the game. I don't know. David Handler and the guys in the truck will make the call, but Lance Hughes with a little showtime. 
Well, the action spoke for itself. There is excellent lead pass. But Texas Tech came up with the turnover to kick it down, and James Dickey was pleased. And Texas Tech, every time the Cougars get close to taking charge, fights off the challenge and takes momentum again. Derek Daniels at the free throw line. Has six points tonight. Hit two three pointers in this half for his six points. Good free throw shooter. And as the Cougar strategy would was early in the game. Derek Daniels makes the second free throw. Look for the Cougars to go to the full court press with Outlaw on the point trying to pressure the inbounds pass. 3.38 to play. There's Daniels now with eight points. It's a six point Texas Tech lead. Don't go away. We've got a dandy. Our Southwest Conference Game of the Week on Prime Network. truck has been planning your getaway for over 80 years and has put all its experience into a new vehicle with the luxury of a leather trimmed interior, the safety of anti-lock brakes, the comfort of a soft ride suspension package, and most important, all the strength you'd expect from a truck company to let you make the leap away from it all. The new SLT Jimmy from GMC Truck, more proof of the strength of experience. Network available on most Prime affiliates. The Red Raider fans are happy here in Lubbock, even the young fans. The Southwest Conference, Texas leading the way. They control their own destiny. TCU and Houston are going to need a little help if they're going to overhaul the Longhorns. You see the teams in the middle of the pack, including Rice and Tech. And now. Pressure by the Cougars, but the Red Raiders get it over the line with ease, leading by six with three and a half minutes to play. And Tech, not normally in a hurry to shoot the basketball. They don't have to be in a hurry at all to put a shot up. Now their strategy at this point, Jerry, can be to trade baskets. Every time the Cougars score, they score. No turnovers, don't rush your shot. Good ball movement, good execution. That's what they've had the whole game. Both teams are in the penalty, both teams. 10 team fouls, so the rest of the way, when somebody goes to the free throw line, they'll shoot a pair. Mondale for the Red Raiders. What a game he's played tonight. Brian Moore for three with five seconds left for the shot clock. Misses it, but an offensive rebound for Will Flemons and a fresh 45. Oh. Well, Just what James Dickey would have battled up if he could have called room service. Yeah, what a big rebound. Cougars didn't box out. Fleming in the right position. They get the second opportunity. Now they go to their motion offense. Six point tech lead down to 235 to play. And remember, tech is also a very good free throw yeah. shooting club. And remember, the motion offense each time on the clock also protects the basketball, work for the high percentage shot. They've now called play 21. That should be a pick from the weak side and a good pass from the point guard that'll try to get the open shot. There it is. Lamont Dale misses a three and the rebound pulled down by Outlaw. Houston will run down by six. Here they come. Derek Daniels out of control is fouled. Derek Daniels a little bit out of control that time, but he is fouled. Brian Moore for the Texas Tech. Red Raiders is called on the personal. And for Brian Moore is his second. So Daniels will go to the line to shoot a pair. Not a bad foul by Moore. You could tell whether it was an intentional foul, but he stopped the momentum as Smith might have gone in for the layup. Either way, he gets the two shots. And remember, look for the full court press if he makes the second free throw. And the Cougars have not been very effective with that press, though. Out of Fort Worth, Derek Daniels. 
He now has nine points, perfect from the line tonight. Matt Foster, his team still in the hunt. Down five at the moment. Daniels is perfect. He's in double figures, has 10. 71-67, Tech by four. Pressure from Houston. Ashley with a bounce to Flemings. He puts it up. Flemings now with 13 points. 73-67, Tech with the lead, and here comes Houston with less than two minutes to play, and Houston is going to call a timeout with a minute 52 left. Pat Foster and his team are in a hole here as they try to turn the tables in Lubbock. kicks in on Prime. College basketball's best schedule coast to coast features top teams Arizona, Oklahoma, Tulane, Louisville, and Houston. This is insane. Women's professional tennis returns as today's brightest stars trade shots in the Virginia Slims of Florida. And college baseball's mad bad boys of summer are back with live games from the SEC and SWC. It's one crazy month of madness. March on Prime. Tech by six with a minute 52 left to play here in Lubbock. Let's take a look at the GMC truck play of the game. Lance Hughes with a little showtime after Ashley made a nice pass. Hughes ahead of the field. We told you he's won some dunk contest in the past. And is he a happy young man or what? Uh, he's won the dunk contest of this game tonight. And remember coming off a great game. 31 points. He now has 19 for the night after scoring 11 at halftime. Here's a steal now by Brian Moore. Moore will hold it up for the Red Raiders. And that is a fitting play to come back after our play of the game because their defense, if they win this game tonight, Tech's defense will be a big story here this evening. Very much so, as well as a, a good quarterback here in Brian Moore, who we've not talked about an awful lot tonight because he's quarterback and got the ball to the open man. But what a solid performance by him out front. Houston has to start thinking about some fouls, don't they? Well, they really do, but they like to try to get the ball as well as foul. If this team handles the ball so well, they, they really can't get it without a pretty wide open foul. A minute seven left is Hughes. With five seconds left in the shot clock, Flemings from three-point range. Air ball. That'll go over to uh, Houston with 59 seconds left and a six-point Texas Tech lead. Well, they didn't, they didn't get a score, but they were able to work that clock down to the point where Houston has, doesn't have an awful lot of time to score. Houston tries to get a three-pointer away by Mack. Yeah, there's going to be a foul against Hughes. And now the officials talk it over, James Armstrong and Mike Fox. They're, gonna, they're, they're arguing as to whether it's a three-point shot attempt. And if it was a three-point shot attempt, he should get three free throws here as he was outside that line he will get three he'll shoot three Sam Mack 17 points to lead Houston he's six for seven from the line tonight he'll shoot three 52 seconds left Mack the better free throw shooters in the conference, 77% from the line. There's two more coming. And remember, traditionally, Houston goes into a full court press if they make the last free throw. If he makes this one at seven and they're only down by three, one steal can put him back in the game, Jerry. Sam McCooley hits all three free throws, and it's a three point tech lead, 73 70. As Houston presses, Ryan Moore trying to get away from Outlaw Falls. Outlaw steals it, loses it out of bounds. It goes over to the Red Raiders. And Pat Foster is all over Lynn Short Nacy. And Pat Foster just came a little bit short of picking up a technical right there. 
They're feeling that Outlaw was knocked down by Moore. There was no doubt that Outlaw was the last man to touch it going out of bounds, but Houston wanted a foul. Super job by the officials here. Let's see what happens as Moore is going down there. He actually falls, and as he's going after the ball, he goes under Outlaw, but the official is right on the play, and watch Coach Pat Foster as he is really trying to get a break here. If we can get another shot of that, what Pat is arguing about, what Coach Foster is arguing about, Moore tried to clear out with the right arm, and Pat Foster thought there should have been a foul. Now Moore in trouble, throws the ball away, gets it to Daniels of Houston. Outlaw off now for Mack to tie the game. Sam Mack, 23 for Mack, and the game is tied at 73 with 30 seconds left. Moore to the front court for Tech, and they take a timeout with 25 seconds left. They trap Brian Moore in the back court. They trapped him in the backcourt. Daniels got it on the inside. It came back out for Mack, who hit a three-pointed to tie it at 73. And now Tech has it with 25 seconds left. And well, Sam Mack hits a big three-pointer to tie this one. Sam Mack has been the most effective guy all night. Good pass back out by Alloys. He didn't have anything. Excellent defensive effort by Hughes. But Sam Mack has the hot hand and the touch from the outside. And that ties up the ball game. The full court pressure had not worked all night. We look at the possession arrow. On any jump balls, the ball will belong to Texas Tech. They're pointing down to the Red Raiders. We'll look at James Dickey and his huddle. On Friday, March 13th, Prime Network brings you all four quarterfinals of the Southwest Conference postseason tournament. Texas, TCU, Houston, and Rice may lead the way, but a lower-seeded team could pull off a major surprise in Dallas. Texas Tech has beaten TCU and upset Rice this past Saturday. That same day, SMU almost got the best of Texas, and earlier this year, Baylor crushed the Longhorns. Join us for what should be an outstanding day of basketball Friday, March 13th, on most Prime affiliates. Well, we've got a dandy going tonight here in Lubbock. Let's see. Houston has two timeouts remaining. Tech will have one timeout remaining. So if uh, Tech has trouble getting the ball in, or if they don't get the shot that they want with time dwindling down, they may lose their last timeout. Lamont Dale will trigger it in just in front of us here. 25 seconds left. The game tied at 73. Well, they can either win or go to overtime. All they have to do is keep possession of the basketball, look for the high percentage shot. If it's not there, take good care of the ball, let the clock run out. Who do you go to? The freshman Hughes, the senior Flemings. Lamont Dale has had a big game. Down to seven seconds left. It's the freshman Hughes. Hughes on the baseline, out high for Moore. Moore with two seconds left, puts the shot up. No good, we're going to overtime. We're going to overtime in Lubbock with the game tied at 73. And James Dickey is still after Lynn Short, and they see the referee in Houston. I'll tell you what, the emotions have changed here. You look over at the Tech bench, and their shoulders have sort of slumped while they're all fired up at the other end for Houston. We have overtime coming up next on Prime Network. At GMC Truck, we've seen days like this for over 80 years. And have learned the value of a van that gives you the most room in its class. The added safety of four-wheel anti-lock brakes. The traction of full-time all-wheel drive. And the feeling of security that can only come from a van that's built as strong as a truck. Safari from GMC Truck. More proof of the strength of experience. It takes desire and dedication to break out of the mold of an average body. General Nutrition Centers can help you break the mold. With Cybergenics, the total bodybuilding system for serious workouts. It's all here. Supplements, diet and training manual, even a videotape. The Cybergenics Bodybuilding Kit. Satisfaction guaranteed. GNC, the authority in sports nutrition products. Well, in overtime, this one will be decided. And this should be nothing new for these two teams. Five out of the last... Seven games here in Lubbock have gone to overtime. We'll check out the final seconds of regulation time here in Houston's defense. Prevented Tech from getting the shot they wanted. Uh, Lance Hughes, the freshman, made a smart move as he got it over to the senior Moore for the shot. They got the shot that they wanted, just not what 
just wouldn't fall there as you saw the shot clock in the lower part of your pitcher fall out and Houston excited as they got new life so it's zero zero at this point. Five out of the last seven here in Lubbock between these two teams as we mentioned going into overtime and for both teams this will be their first overtime game of the season. Southwest Conference Game of the Week on Prime Network has been brought to you by GMC Truck, the strength of experience. Through regulation time, Tech shot 50%, as did Houston. Tech had the rebounding edge, 33-27. 17 turnovers for Tech, 14 for Houston. We go in overtime tied at 73. From the tip, it's controlled by the Cougars. This is... Derek Daniels. Daniels helped lead the charge back, made some nice defensive plays down the stretch. Mack was their offensive go-to guy. Derek Smith on the inside for Outlaw, playing with four fouls. Smith for Upchurch. Some fouls to be concerned with here. Sam Mack hits the shot and draws the foul. Sam Mack with a big-time play, though, count the basket. Foul is on Lance Hughes. That's four on Hughes. Uh, Sam Mack showed us some individual athletic ability here. He makes a nice spin move down inside. The rookie used pretty decent defensive position, but he got caught reaching there as Mack made the reverse move to get the shot off. Basket counts. You see his enthusiasm. One more for three-point play. And it'll really be interesting to see if the Cougars go back to full-court press on this made free throw. Houston hasn't had many leads tonight. They lead by two in overtime. They lead by three in overtime. 26 points now for him. Sam Mack. They choose not to press here and they go back into their zone looking for the half court trap. 76 73. Houston in overtime. Trying to stay in the hunt for the Southwest Conference regular season championship. Half a game out of second behind TCU right now. Houston. A record of 7 and 3 in the conference. TCU 8 and 3. Texas at 9 and 2 leading the way. Question is, can Tech regain the momentum or has Houston stolen momentum and now are they in charge? Here's a pass in for Will Flemons. The ball taken away by the Cougars again. It's their defense doing the job. And they will be in no hurry to put up a shot here, leading by three in overtime. Houston playing with a lot more vim and vigor out there. Is they have come from way back to force this one into overtime and now have taken the lead. Upchurch, a turnaround jumper doesn't go, but Outlaw, big rebound, and he throws it away. That'll be over and back unless it's picked up by Tech. It is, and, and now Brian Moore falls. The ball goes out of bounds, and James Dickey has to be wondering what can go wrong next. I mean, he could have just let that. It was a great hustling job by the youngster Brian Moore, but he could have let the ball go. Houston would have picked it up. It would have been in a turnover against the Cougars. Well, it's tough to make a decision here. You're taught to hustle at all times, but uh, the decision as a senior guard, you got to make the decision that the ball's going out of bounds. You would have got possession of it anyway. Two defensive men back. Bad gamble. Now on the inside, outlaw and Flemings. Shaping up as far as WrestleMania 8. Okay, they were going at it a moment ago. You heard the crowd reaction. Sam Mack has been the man. The ball stays in his hands. Inside for Outlaw with the alley oop. Outside for Diaz. Daniels for three. And the rebound picked up by Daniels in the middle. Short jumper. He hits a jumper there that puts Houston up by five. Daniels with a dozen tonight. 78-73. Houston with a five-point lead in overtime with 2.45 to play. Texas Tech cannot get back on track. They've lost that fine edge that they have. The Houston Cougars have taken charge, and they're in control of momentum. That basket won't count. A foul on the side. Foul is on Diaz. Now Diaz has given him some good defense. He's given him some good size at 6'7". He's done a good job working the ball right on the inside. And now they're going to come with Derek Smith. Remember that when they went to that small lineup in the latter part of the first uh, second half when they got back in the game. With a minute with a minute 53 remaining, Tech led 73-66. They have not scored since a minute 53 left in regulation time until this free throw is hit by Lance Hughes, who now has 20. Coming off a career-high 31 at Rice. 
He pulls his team within four. The freshman out of Georgetown, Lance Hughes. That's another free throw, 21 for Hughes. A three point, Houston Lee. And that Tech defense, which was so tough in the first half, needs to reassert itself. They come out man to man. Ava Diaz finds Sam Mack. He led the charge back offensively for the Cougars. The Cougars now running a form of a motion offense themselves, as Texas Tech did. And it's going to be a foul down inside. On up, Church. On up, Church. And that's four on up, Church. Well, I think the foul's on Austin. Oh, yeah, it is on up, Church. Austin, Austin didn't like it. Yeah, Austin and Upchurch battling down inside. That's the contact there. Upchurch pushing Austin. Austin pushing Upchurch, but the official makes the call against Upchurch. And Alan Austin goes to the free throw line, a 50% free throw shooter. He has not scored tonight. Upchurch. You know these youngsters are tired. This one's been a hard fought game. Austin will get another. Trying to get on the score sheet. These are large free throws. Austin's done a good job defensively, and he's also gotten a tip a couple of times as he's the guy who had the jump ball at each half. He misses two free throws, and Houston comes away with the basketball and a three-point lead. Lamont Dale will be checking in for the Red Raiders in a moment. And Houston takes a timeout with 2.05 to play. Houston with a three-point lead. We're in overtime. Our Southwest Conference Game of the Week here on Prime Network, and the Cougars have a three-point lead. How can we make this more severe? Buick's pursuit of quality never ends. I agree with that. We're going to make it even tougher. We need to go in with higher speeds, higher coring loads. Because it's not perfect until it's Buick perfect. But it's not good enough for what we want to do. So let's go with 23% hill, maximum. Quality at last. The anti-lock brakes allow to Even after a year of use, no domestic car maker is more trouble-free than Buick. Great work. You sure you don't want us to run some more tests? With 99 models redesigned and engineered, GM is putting quality on the road. For every athlete who trades months of training for a moment of glory. For those who have a dream to break out of the pack, take the challenge, and be the best. And for all that see the path to victory as a lifelong adventure, we salute you. Prime Network, we deliver the dream. There's the story in a nutshell. 205 left in overtime. Houston with a three point lead. Houston, the rest of the way in the Southwest Conference, have two of their last three in conference play at home, where they're very tough at Hawkeyes Pavilion. The host AM and host TCU will have that one next Tuesday on Prime Network, and then they end up at SMU. Sam Mack. David Diaz against Lance Hughes. Eric Daniels, down to 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Back with the inside for Upchurch. He's covered by Dale, who's back in there. Now Mack looks for an opening. Mack in the middle, up with the jumper. Doesn't get it to fall. The ball taken by the Cougars, and it comes out for Daniels with a fresh 45. Down to a minute 27 remaining. In overtime with Houston leading by three, and they have the basketball. Obviously, Houston trying to work the clock as much as possible. Look the high percentage shot. David Diaz doing a good job with the guard tandem inside, but this is the man, Sam Mack, that has worked this second half to perfection. And he works for that hoop as he drives to the baseline. Sam Mack with a game-high 28 points, and it's a five-point Houston lead with less than a minute to go. 80 to 75 in overtime, the Cougars by five. Let's see, Lance Hughes from the corner for three. A big shot there. Lance Hughes has 24. And a timeout for Texas Tech with 50 seconds remaining. Houston by two in overtime with 50 seconds left. Our Southwest Conference Game of the Week on Prime Network. At GMC Truck, our only business is trucks. That has been for over 80 years. A dedication to truck strengths and values to keep in mind. 
Because when you need to haul something, tow something. Carry precious cargo. Find new trails or simply ride high and proud. There's nothing quite as strong as a truck. GMC Truck, the strength of experience. Everyone who becomes a star on this field was once a star in high school, like Emmett Smith, who appeared on the cover of one of my recruiting magazines a few years ago. Hi, I'm Max Emfinger. I've personally written thousands of reports ranking blue chip high school athletes, giving the fans the information on the colleges that have the inside track on signing them. I'll even tell you what kind of recruiting year your favorite college is having. Call my Super Scouts recruiting hotline now. Call the recruiting hotline at 1-900-896-2400. $1.95 for the first minute, 95 cents each additional minute. Must be 18. Tech was down by five, but then the freshman out of Georgetown. Lance Hughes went to work from the right corner, and he buries a three to pull his team within a deuce. Well, that's well within his range as we saw the 24th point by the freshman. Remember, he had 31 in the last ball game, so quite an outstanding two-game scoring average. 24 for Hughes. Mack leads with 28. He scored 25 of his 28 in the second half. We're in overtime. You see the clock. That's the game clock. Austin went for the steal and draws the foul. Austin has fouled out with 35 seconds left in overtime. He fouls out, did not score tonight. Stacy Bailey in. If you're going to foul somebody on Houston, and they're not a real good free throw shooting team, the one guy you don't really want to foul is Sam Mack. Not tonight. Not tonight. Or most nights, really. Remember, he's an interesting player. He was a starter earlier in the season. In the last four ball games, he's come off the bench, but he leads this team in scoring at 20 points against Rice in a big victory. And tonight, 25 points here in the second half. And uh, going to the line again, total 28 at this point, could end up with a 30-point night. His career high is 32 in a game we had earlier this year on Prime Network against North Carolina. Sam Mack has been the story in the second half for Houston. 29 for Mack, and he's done a bunch of it at the free throw line tonight. moment Houston by three just 35 seconds left and that one started to come out but falls back through 30 for Sam Mack a four point Houston lead Tech will have to get a quick shot away Moore can't find anybody to throw it to now Dale on a drive all the way for the scoop doesn't get it and a rebound for Outlaw Outlaw a pass ahead for Upchurch ahead of the field goes in and misses the shot Clemens the rebound 15 seconds left the pass for Hughes Hughes in traffic puts a ball up off the glass for two and a timeout tech with 11 seconds left it was Helter Skelter and Hughes somehow coolly found an opening to bank that one in and Hughes now with 26 points to lead the Red Raiders they still have a shot down by two with 11 seconds to go Mr. Truppiano. Yes. Talk to me about double overtime. <laughs> well, we'll watch the work of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. First, Houston looked like they had it sewed up. They tried to foul Outlaw. His length of the court pass for Upchurch, bothered by Stacy Bailey. Another rebound for Flemings, who got it to Moore, who kicked it ahead for Lance Hughes. And watch this work in traffic. One on three here. Freshman shows you a good move there with a head fake just at the last second, the right time as he really puts it down. That enabled him to take the time out. Now they regroup. Both coaches trying to set up some strategies here with 11 seconds to go. Tech down by two. You really got to do some coaching at this point. 11 seconds to go. Houston a two-point lead. Possession arrow pointing towards Tech. Tech is out of timeouts. And Houston will have the length of the floor to travel and they will be able to run the baseline after the main basket so they will be able to run the baseline as they try to get the ball in now if you're tech you've got some people to look at if you're going to foul let's see uh, they've taken Upchurch out of the game they've got Mac Diaz Smith Daniels and Upchurch Upchurch of that five would be the poorest free throw shooter of that five 11 well, seconds to go first thing you do is go for the steal though before you go for the foul 
Daniels with the ball, and he's fouled by Bryant Moore. And Daniels will be going to the line with eight seconds to go. And they wanted, Houston wanted the intentional foul, but that wasn't called since he was going for the ball. They called the foul on Bryant Moore, and now Derek Daniels, who has scored 12 points tonight, all 12 of the points coming in the second half, including two points here in all overtime as Outlaw checks back in. Daniels, four for four from the line. Two very large free throws. That gives Tech a chance. That gives Tech a chance. Even if he hits this one, they can tie it with a three. No timeouts left for the Red Raiders. Daniels now with 13 points. Here comes Tech. The seconds tick away. Ryan Moore looking for a three. Lamont Dale puts up a three. Doesn't get it to go. Rebound Houston and the Cougars win. In overtime, the Houston Cougars come from way back and walk out with a three-point win to stay alive in the Southwest Conference race as the Cougars go to 8-3 and three in the conference, and Tech falls to 5-7. and seven. A big, big win here for the Houston Cougars. We'll take a look at the final eight seconds of play, and you know that Houston had to be figuring they had to defend Lance Hughes, who was open on the sideline, but they had some room. He did break open, broke around Sam Mack, but... Lamont Dale was challenged by Outlaw, who was way out front, challenging the shooter, and that one clanged off the iron. Well, obviously, obviously, if you draw it up, you want to go to Lance Hughes with the guy with the hot hand, but very possibly you got to make a quick decision. There was eight seconds on the clock when Texas Tech started up the court with the basketball. I tell you, the hot guy in the second half was Sam Mack, 27 of his game high 30 in the second half, and Houston wins it by three in overtime. Property owners, if you want to clear overgrown areas, you could struggle with a